Okay, welcome. Uh, we are now on uh, Science of Flight, Chapter 3, Lesson 1, finishing up uh, that today, I hope. Human Physiology and Air Flight, we're on altitude, uh, altitude induced decompression sickness on page 229. What is the definition of altitude uh, decompression sickness, someone? What does decompression sickness mean? The condition resulting from exposure to low pressure that causes dissolved gases in the body to form bubbles. Yes, that doesn't sound very good to have bubbles in your body by gases. When is this most likely uh, to be associated with? What kind of what kind of sport is this most likely to be associated with? Diving, scuba diving. Scuba diving. Yes, I actually go to page two thirty, and we actually talk there in the top of the page about the bends. Uh, I have never had any friends to have decompression sickness in flying, but I have had probably a half dozen uh, friends that have had decompression sickness uh, bends uh, because of their diving. Uh, actually, in the Navy, you realize the Navy uh, dives, that's their job, is to fly and dive, really. <laughs> and they actually have uh, altitude chambers on their boats to uh, get them through the bends. Uh, the bends is uh, there at the top. You kind of need to know what that means. Mainly it's bubbles uh, coming into your, your different uh, joints usually. Uh, usually it's nitrogen, nitrogen narcosis. And it can be a dull ache, but of course if one of those bubbles goes to your lungs or your heart, it can kill you. It flat can kill you. Uh, again, I have never heard of anybody uh, in, in my world have problems with this. Uh, with high altitudes uh, decompression uh, because we're very careful with it and the systems are very, very sophisticated now. So uh, uh, the skin bends, and like down at the bottom it talks about your skin and you have uh, different types of marbled or mottled skin uh, uh, color around your shoulders, upper chest. I've actually seen that. Uh, uh, with, uh, you know, I've had, had friends that had pictures of it, you know, scuba diving, and usually those are scuba divers that are not careful. They don't follow the rules. If you follow the rules, uh, you don't have problems. But if you go out and you're with your buddies and you, you uh, do dumb things, make bad choices, guess what? You can get sick and you can, uh, generally, generally doesn't kill you, but it can, certainly can, especially the chokes there uh, when it deals with your, your respiration. Okay. Uh, one of the major things we're going to cover here today is effects on the body uh, via G-forces. When we're sitting here on our, our bottoms uh, in class, how many G's are we pulling? One. There's a picture of an F-16. Uh, a G-force is a force uh, of, of gravity on your body which is greater really than your, your one G-force G that you're being subject to right now. <coughs> when you have the F-16 up there, does anybody know what it was designed to? What forces do the, the pilots <coughs> excuse me, uh, are subjected to every day in that? Nine. nine. Nine is the magic number. That's exactly right. Nine was the magic number for the F-15, which I flew. I guess I misspoke. It wasn't designed. I'm sure it was designed for more than that, but what the... Uh, what well, the pilots can go up to 9 G's in the F-15, F-16, and then what happens is when you put on, is kind of interesting, uh, if you look at that picture there that I have above you there of the F-16, you see the wing tanks and you see the missiles and there's a couple bombs on there, the targeting pod, all these external things that are actually being uh, uh, put on the plane limit the amount of G's. And I know with external tanks, you cannot pull nine Gs on that plane. So uh, it was interesting. It's a really neat picture they put in, the, put in here, but relative to the Gs and pulling maximum Gs, that's not what that plane could do. Um, how do G forces affect your body? What exactly happens to it? When you're, and the only thing really I've been able to compare it to for uh, non-flyers is or driving a car, guys. You drive a car and you... Uh, go around a curve and you're kind of slung to the side, that's a G. Now that's a force of gravity. Uh, if you're actually in a race car you see on TV and they have these super elevated curves that are like that, that is splitting up the G's into a lateral 
in a transitional forces, and actually that's on your next page there, 3232. If you look on that, you see the, uh, what, what plane is that taking off there at the bottom of the page? F-22, he's doing an air show. He's doing loop-de-loops to music. And actually in the background you see home of the Thunderbirds. That's actually at uh, Nellis Air Force Base in uh, Las Vegas. But when you see the la linear, radial, and angular acceleration with the di different types of accelerations, when you're actually in a race car, and you're driving in a race car and like Daytona 500 and you have these super elevated ramps that is sh letting the race car go extremely fast without flying off the road. I mean you can't make a turn at 200 miles an hour but they go around these banks at 200 miles an hour because their g-forces are broken up into different components and keeps them on the tracks. When you go down to Phoenix and you hit those big intersections, they're called um, the highway intersections where like two separated highways hit them and you have the big ramps going off that you know exit like the 101, set highway 17 to 101 east or west. Those ramps are not flat, they're angled for this exact reason that you're probably going 55 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour and you want to be able to have the G forces in your body of making a turn keep you on the road. And so it's the same concept here. Uh, four pilots, uh, actually, actually talks about it there in the wingtips at the top of the page there. It talks about naval aviators feel G-forces on takeoff and landing because they're catapulted. You go from zero to 150, what, 160 miles an hour in under two seconds. That's a huge kick in the butt, as we say. Same thing with, uh, with cars. If you're you know, coming up to a stop sign, stop light, how about a stoplight? You might have been to a, coming up to a stoplight and had your parents slam on the brakes and you go, Rrr. well, guess what? Those are negative G's pushing you forward against your, your, your seat belt. And, uh, and that, that also affects your body. How about that? Let's, not, let's talk about when people are doing uh, G's and your body is subject to subjecting yourself to more than one G, how does that affect your body? Yes, sir. Doesn't like the blood start rushing to where the G's are pushing it? Well, he's exactly right. Your blood it should be in your head, right? That's keeping your most important organ, keeping you alive. But it, your body, your, your heart is only trying to pump the normal blood up to your head at the same 1G that it was designed for. And then we're going through all these other forces of gravity. It's called your, your blood pressure, essentially in your head, goes down. And when your blood pressure goes down, I can't remember the numbers, to a certain amount, then you have the tunnel vision that we were talking about the other day. You lose your peripheral vision, and eventually you'll pass out. Yes, sir? You can do the same thing with the scope. You can get tunnel vision. A scope? What do you mean a scope? As in rifle scope. Okay. If you get too close or too far, it'll actually start tunneling. From what? You mean when you're looking at your, your distance changes, and if you're too close or too far, it'll actually. Happen. Oh, you mean the scope? Okay, well that's an ocular issue. Yeah, it's not your body actually passing out. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So that makes sense. So then, what about negative G's? When you're slamming on the brakes and you're pushing forward, well, if you're having too low a pressure with positive G's, what would happen to negative G's? Hmm. Hmm. Too high of pressure. So if you're, instead of doing a loop where you're going like this and it's being pushed down to the bottom and that's positive G's, what if you're in an air show and you actually go, and I've seen people do this, to go upside downwards and do an outside loop so you're being slammed into your seat belt all the way over the top, all the way over the top, and then you, know, you come down to the bottom, you're upside downwards, that's an outside loop. What happens to your body there? All the blood goes to your head. All your blood, you have high pressure in your head. So what happens to your head when you have high pressure that's never designed with? It explodes! <laughs> well actually it's called a red out instead of a blacking out. Instead of blacking out it's called a red out and you actually have your eyes become red. And it's because they have too much blood, too much pressure and you can die on that also. Uh, you die, you know, blacking out when you're pulling positive G's you, you actually you know, have the tunnel vision, it comes to nothing, and then you go to sleep. And you, of course, flying 400, 500 miles an hour, going to sleep is not good. <laughs> and you actually pass out for literally seconds, like 30 or 40 seconds, 
and people generally crash and kill themselves. Uh, that has been a problem with specifically F-16s for C's because the G onset is very high for the F-16. You can just, you actually, the, the stick does not move, it's pressure. And maybe you do too much pressure, all of a sudden, boom, you're out. How do you stop from passing out? You let go. Squeeze your legs. Squeeze your legs. Have we done this in this class? No, sir. No, sir. All right, everybody, get your seats. We're going to have fun here. Let me, uh, let, me put, let me put it on the big screen so everybody can see this. All right, I'm going to teach you guys how to pull G's. How many, how many, how many teachers? All right, so what you got to do, get your seats. Sit properly in your seat because you're sitting in your fire. All right, there you go. All right, I'm going to teach you guys how to pull G's, okay? All right, you got to have your back straight, properly straight. And I guess put your right hand sort of like you're holding a stick and your left hand over on the... Got it. Uh, you know, how about right hand on top of your knees? And left hand on top of your knees. So just sit there. All right, now what happens when you're pulling G's is you want to keep the blood from leaving your head. Hmm. So the way I do that is you actually have to tighten up your chest, which keeps the blood from leaving your head. And also what happens if you don't tighten your extremities, meaning your legs and your arms, then the blood goes down into your arms and you have high blood pressure on your arms or high blood pressure in your legs and it's not it's leaving your head so what you have to do is sit like this properly and then tighten up your chest tighten up your arms tighten up your butt okay because and your legs and you grunt okay <laughs> and the thing is you don't you don't keep you don't hold your if you hold your breath then what happens is good for a little while but then it beats it so you have to breathe out in very quick guttural sounds and this is not you don't see this in in, in movies this is not in top gun and all the, the fighter movies they're just doing this normal but what happens you're you're tightening up and you're going is my head getting red <laughs> Okay, well that's good. If your head's getting red, that's good. But you're breathing as much as possible. And it's like, I think the number is four to six seconds. So you're grunting, and then you take breath in every four to six seconds, and you continue to grunt. All right, so now, everybody can practice this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is audience participation. All right, so you ready? I'm going to give you one more example. I'm ready? I'm tight. You tighten up. Ready? And here comes the G's. <laughs> All right, all right, ready to go? All right, come on, you're laughing at me. I'm gonna laugh at you guys. Ned Barnes, I wanna see you come out here. All right, all right, you're key, you're not passing out. So you gotta, you gotta get your head, see how white red, my, I can feel myself slush, okay. All right, ready? All right, all right, G on set and go! <laughs> I think a few of you guys did not pass out. Pass out. Try it one more. I want to see some participation. We're going to get participation grades here. Oh, guys, sit back. And back. Hey, Robbins, I don't see participation here. Let's go. One, two, three, go. I don't see any red hair. All right, good job. Okay, and guess what? <laughs> and guess what? That was easy because you're looking out of the front of the plane. You're attacking somebody else. What happens if somebody's attacking you? Which way are you looking? Front row, yes, that is a bad thing. So not only are you grunting because you're pulling, but you are going. <laughs> And you are looking behind you, and that is really, really difficult. What happens if you lose sight of somebody who's shooting you? You die. Lose, lose sight, lose fight. So you've got to be... Uh, what happens if you're pulling G's, and you're looking backwards, and you're trying to find the guy behind you, and you have tunnel vision? Uh -oh. You can't see him, right? Because you're trying to use your peripheral vision to look right behind you. And you're pulling the G's because you're trying to defend yourself. That is a bad day. You got to be good. 
Eject. It is not <laughs> eject, eject. You're giving up a $60 million plane because you're a wimp and you can't pull G's. <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> I'm glad you guys did it. Y'all did, y'all did average. Maybe I should have that at the beginning of each class. Let's, let's let every kid graduate here and know how to pull G's. That would be good. Um, <laughs> All righty. On your uh, bottom of page 233, we talk about G-suits. You actually have G-suits and different equipment that can help you sustain higher Gs. And I do have this, and I'll bring it in here probably by the end of the week, but basically you wear special equipment that is like a gaucho from an uh, old cowboy movie, they call it, and they tighten up everything around your legs so that you can have something to strain against. And also, in the, uh, in the chest region, there's something called positive breathing. And if you have more positive pressure than your regular atmospheric pressure here, you would actually have your chest have tightened up also. So there are different garments that they talk about there on the page, bottom of page 233 that help you as pressure suits incur these higher Gs. Uh, how about this? Let's go to, let's see if it works out here. Let's go online, and I want to show you one of my favorite, uh, favorite pictures here of pilot trainings and pilots passing out, okay? So let's see if this will work here. Uh-huh, let's, uh, let's, let's, this is all on YouTube. The first ride is going to be a gradual onset ride to a maximum of seven Gs. Are you ready? Yeah, right. Uh, sure. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm ready. Let me show you first of all what they're doing here. This is called a uh, centrifuge, okay? A centrifugal force that pushes it out, okay? This huge thing will spin around, and they have one in uh, New Mexico, they have one in Texas. I've been in these things about uh, four times maybe in my 30 year career. You get recertified. But basically it's a huge, huge, big uh, spinning machine. But at the very end here where you're actually on the end is just like a cockpit. And you're subjected to G's up to nine G's. And you're supposed to practice just what you guys were practicing, of course, it's obvious if you're not doing it right, because if you're not doing it right, what happens? You pass, you pass out. out. And it's not good to pass out. I never passed out, but I do have, I'm trying to find it. I do have videos of myself in this machine, and it's pretty funny, because your face gets quite distorted when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it is very impressive. So this is part of the training you, you undergo when you're in a, in a high G uh, machine. So here is a picture. I'm going to watch this for about three minutes here of people in that centrifuge going through this train. Let's see how they do. All right, your first ride is going to be that gradual onset ride to a maximum of seven Gs. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, sure. Are you ready? Go for it. Yes, yes sir. I'm okay. ready. They're individually doing this. This is spliced together. Three, two, one, engage. If you lose all the green, tell me now and start that lower body straight, okay? Okay. Squeeze those legs nice and tight. Catch one, two, three. Looking Okay, on the top left there it says, <laughs> on the C it says 8.4. That's how many G's he's doing. That, that's, that's pretty impressive. He's doing well. Oh, good. Squeeze everything nice and tight. I'm losing it. Not yet, not yet. It's only two G's. Okay. It's only two G's. You should feel like you're going straight up to the... Okay, I'm sorry, I lied. See on there on the top left, it says G303. That's how many G's they're talking. Uh, that's four G right there. You're doing good. Three, two, one, engage. Back on the stick. On top. On top, breathe. <laughs> You're on top breathe. You're on top breathe. <laughs> 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 
Did you see that? It was five G's. That was not nine, guys. And this is rapid onset, meaning just like with F-16, you pull it and it's going to boom, like in one second. On top three. Hold. See how she's trying to hold it? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You hear the trying to, trying to get the system. One, two, three, breathe. So it's about four to six seconds. And you're look at how look at how distorted the faces are. These are all fighter pilots. These are all going to be fighter pilots in a high high G jets. Three, one, <laughs> two, three, <laughs> one, two, three. He's pretty cool. Legs tight, butt tight. Three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay. Stay what? tight, stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Are you with me? Coming back around? You think you can fly a plane now? Uh, you can fly. Hello, Will? Hello. Will, sit up. I'm up. Sit up. I'm up. Sit up. I'm up. You're up. We just broke. Put your head up. Put your head up. Oh. You ain't lost. Yeah. Evan. Okay, G lock is G loss of consciousness. Did you see how those guys lost consciousness? That wouldn't be good when you're flying at 500 feet and 500 miles an hour, okay? It happens, people have died. So that's why they go through this massive training so they know what it feels like. And the reason they passed out, why do they pass out, guys? <laughs> improper G, improper G, and maybe we're going, <laughs> they were not, Truly keeping the pressure up in their head. I mean, they, they had improper technique. I'm taking the ID lock. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You all right? Yeah, a little bit. I'm gonna vomit. Okay. Come back. He was a big jerk. What was that? Bag. They were throwing up. Okay, a lot of times when you G lock, you think about it. Your stomach is all messed up, and you're throwing up. How much fun would it be to fly a jet and pass out and maybe kill yourself because you have a mask on? Then what happens when you throw up and you have a mask on? Yeah. Yeah. This isn't in Hollywood, guys. This is the real story. Okay, this is the real story. I actually have no comment for you. Everything went real good. She did great. How do you feel? She did great. Woo! Good job. <laughs> <laughs> she did great. Okay. <laughs> this is, uh... <laughs> All right, so now this is... That was an example of someone who did, uh... Not so good. And here is another one. Keep it squeezed unless you want to stop. Three, two, one, engage. There's the G on the top left. Okay, and just like you see, just about all that to do. There's a heart rate. Nice, relaxed, good. Hand back against the headrest. You're going to wait until you lose all of your green lights or half of your red light. When that happens, you're going to take in a deep breath, bear down, and start the strain of maneuver. Good job. Just watch your red light. You lose all the green, half the red, deep breath, start the strain of maneuver. Good heart rate. All the green, half the red, deep breath, start the strain of the river. Lose all the green, half the red, deep breath, start the strain of the Deep breath in through the mouth. Three, one, two. Nine G's.
Did you hear her saying arms and legs and stomach? That's what you have to keep your, your breath together. What makes this guy do better than other people? If you're trying to keep your pressure head and your head high, what physically looking at this guy would make him better than other people? He is buffed. Buffed. You got to be strong. You got to be in shape. What else? Yeah. Go ahead. Constant heart rate for a while. Okay, well, he's, he's in shape. The guy lifts weights. What about a skinny long neck versus a no neck? If you have no necks, guess what? Physically, you're probably able to keep the pressure up here. You don't have to, the, the heart does not have to pump it as far to go up here than a strong, short neck. That's just a fact. This guy is the perfect design for someone to fly F 16s. He won. He was fantastic. No big deal. Look at him. <laughs> big deal. That was nothing. And he wasn't pulling, he wasn't looking behind himself. Imagine pulling G's and looking behind yourself. Yes. It's time. Gotcha. And so, anyway, that was an example of uh, the G-lock uh, in a situation like that. We'll close up here today, and we're going to finish up lesson one tomorrow and go into lesson two.